بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم انا نحمدك ونستعينك ونستغفرك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا محمد النبي الامين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين my dear brothers and sisters uh, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome you to another episode in our series lessons al qawaid al khams al kubra the grand five legal maxims and their applications and in today's episode inshallah i will explain some more details regarding the first legal maxim the most important legal maxim al umur bil maqasid matters are judged by intentions i will discuss first why is this qaida important and what are the exceptions to the rule and the place of niyyah in ibadat and virtuous deeds and some subsidiary rules in this way we can have a better picture better view of this rule inshallah why this qaida if you look at this qaida deeply it has a moral and spiritual dimension it's not limited to legal dimension it helps us to make our to formulate intentions to think through our actions because all of our actions have cosmic significance so al umur bi maqasidha is stressing that we need to clear our mind we need to think through the actions as we perform them so it le- helps us to lead and examine life and to shake off heedlessness ghafla ghafla is the trait of the cattle the animal who are acting by their instinct they don't think through their actions but as human beings we need to think before we act so it helps us if we develop the habit of uh, cultivating the intentional act doing things intentionally it helps us to develop will power and mindfulness the subsidiary rule which is an explanation of the same thing a further application exposition of it la thawaba illa bi niyyah there is no reward without intention this is especially true of the acts of worship that we perform we have mentioned it earlier but let us go into little more detail acts like ghusl wudu this can be a rewarding act an act of worship if we have the niyyah but if you were to bait or perform that ablution without the niyyah is not an act of worship the same way as salah siyam fasting hajj everything all acts of worship for their validity we need to have that niya or intention in other words acts for their acceptance must be done solely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we read in quran verse 8 surah 18 verse 110 فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه احدا so whoever hopes to meet his lord let him perform righteous deeds and make no one a partner unto his lordship unto his lord in worship fulail ibn ayyad one of the pious sages and saints of the early generation said soundness salahul amal is dependent on two conditions or based on two pillars number one the act we perform must be in the first place sanctioned should be allowed 
approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, we must do them with the sincere intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, this virtuous deed is not acceptable. On the other hand, niya, if we have the niya intention, every single permissible act that we do can be rendered, can be turned into an act of worship. <clears throat> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you engage in that spousal relationship, intimacy with your spouse, with your wife, that's an act of worship. Because if you do it to guard yourself, to remain chaste, to be protected from sins, that's an act of worship. Even as if you were to go out and do have, engage in an extramarital affair, you will be punished the same way. You will have a reward for that permissible act once it is done uh, for the sake of protecting yourself. Likewise, niya, when you have the niya to resolve or resolution, resolve in our mind to do something good. But God forbid we were prevented from doing so in spite of our best intentions, because of circumstances beyond our control, then we are already rewarded as if we have done it already. The Prophet said, if someone intended while going to bed, before going to bed, to wake up for tahajjud, but because of that exhaustion, over tiredness, or oversleep, he could not wake up. And he, he will get the reward because he had that intention to do so, but he was prevented because of circumstances beyond his control. So Allah will reward him for that act. Someone wanted to give charity, but he didn't have anything to give. So he will be rewarded as if he has already given the charity. In one of his expeditions with his companions, the Prophet ﷺ was gathered with his companions. He addressed them and said, we have left behind us in Medina people, they would be with us always wherever we went in every single expedition and venture we undertook, they were with us. But this time they could not make it because of illness or valid excuses. So they already shared the reward of this expedition with us. Now, another point to consider is there is no accountability for words or actions that are not intentional. If somebody uttered the words of divorce, Talaq without any intention. Just this word came out without intention. Of course, that will not be considered as a valid divorce. Likewise, if somebody extreme fit of anger, driven by out of control and is not aware of the words he's speaking, and he said Talaq Talaq, and and later on he regretted it. That's not considered a valid Talaq as Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn al-Taymiyyah and others have said, because la talaqa fi ghalaq. Talaq is not valid uh, when the mind is blockage of mind, when the, and you cannot, you don't think, you are not aware of what you say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, statements of words that are not intentional. Allah says, la yu'akhidukum allahu billaghubi fi aymanikum. وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِذُكُمْ بِمَا قَسَبَتُ قُلُوبُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Allah will not call you to account or take you to task for all things you have uttered unintentionally, but he will call you to account for what you mean in your hearts. God is the most forgiving and forbearing. Exceptions to the no rule, الْأُمُورُ بِمَقَاسِدِهَا you know, all matters are judged by intentions or reckoned by intention. Exceptions is contracts that are finalized verbally or in writing. For example, a sale or lease contract 
house sale, house purchase, and you have articulated that in writing or in words, and you signed it, the document, you cannot say I didn't have the intention. So it's an exception because these expressions, as long as, of course, one has to be in a sober state of mind, in full possession of senses, and is not in duress. We have already mentioned that in the, in the previous session. So as long as that is not the case, any agreement we make verbally or in writing, we cannot excuse ourselves by saying, I didn't have the intention. But it's a different issue altogether when the expression, the words used are not explicitly indicating. This is kinaya. So it requires niya. For example, if A says to B, this car is yours, is the niya that, that makes, that determines whether it was a sale or not. Because if the niya is to give it to him free as a gift, it's not considered a sale, it's a hadiya. So the niya make that distinction, whether it was a sale or a gift. Likewise, a person utters, says to his wife, you are free. It's the niya that decides whether it considered divorce. If he says, no, I didn't mean a divorce. I meant to say that you are free to go home. You are free to visit your parents or whatever. So niya makes the distinction crucial. Niya, once again, is critical in deciding the cases like that. You know, some, sometimes we, people put out a jar to collect rainwater. And somebody came and, you know, you know, threw it out. If the, his niya was that he put it out to collect rainwater and anyone who destroys that water, who takes away, who does everything to interfere with that water, he should be, he is liable. He should pay if, he, if, if, if it goes to the court or if, if the person wants a compensation, he need to compensate for it. Likewise, if a person pick up uh, lost articles, you're walking and you found something, a wallet or something with money and you picked it up and his intention was to keep it in trust for that person Whenever he arrives, he comes to claim it, he will surrender it to him. If the intention while he, he picked up the act was to give it to the rightful owner, then suppose God forbid it is stolen or it is destroyed by fire, he is not liable. If on the other hand, the person picked it up and he thought, okay, now I, have, I, I can use it, it's mine and the owner comes and asks for it, he's liable. So the intention to make that different distinction. Another subsidiary rule, whoever, uh, whoever has it to get something before his due time, he will be deprived of its benefit. An example is, if God forbids, a son kills his father to claim the inheritance, then the, that son will be disqualified as a heir. Heir, he will not be receiving any share from that inheritance. When whoever has hands to get something before his due time, he would be deprived of its benefit as a penalty. So these are some of the explanations. I hope it would be in this way, this or we have a better understanding of that grand legal maxim al bi maqasidiha. Inshallah, in the coming sessions, we will visit some of the other legal maxims, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit uh, from 
proper understanding and knowledge of their religion to enhance our understanding and practice of it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.